Hello, my name is Nolan O'Keefe, and today I am proud to present to you my capstone project for my music technology minor. In my project, I explore the future of synthesizers, but before I talk about the future, I would like to explain the origins of this project. In my junior year of college, I studied abroad at the University of Leeds in England. While I was there, I took a very interesting music technology class that really opened my eyes to how technology can be used to manipulate sound. In this class, I learned this visual programming language called Max MSP. And what I mean by visual programming language, rather than a coding language that is just filled with long lines of code that seem very tedious, visual programming languages are rather blocks of code that use like seemingly like almost like Lego blocks that you try to combine together in order to perform these tasks or effects. And in Max, you use these blocks of code to manip manipulate sound. It's very popular for people like musicians or DJs or just people who want to experiment with sound. So in this class, I learned Max MSP. And for a project in that class, I built my own synthesizer using all the code and tools in Max. However, I wanted to expand on what I did in that class and do something more. And that's how we get to my project today. For my capstone project for my music technology minor, I coded a synthesizer that utilizes the data from a hand motion tracking sensor to manipulate the sound of the synthesizer. And now I would like to demonstrate the synthesizer for you. Before we get into the heart of the code, I want to talk about some of the external devices I need to use in order to make this project work. This is my Akai MPK Mini MIDI. I use this um, to control the synthesizer from a MIDI standpoint and input MIDI notes um, in order to create uh, musical notes. For the hand motion tracking sensor, I use a leap motion controller. Um, I place my hand over it and it will read data and I would like to um, give a demonstration of how this would look um, on my computer. What you're seeing now is the diagnostics tool for the leap motion controller and it also acts as a nice visualizer um, to show you how this works. So below me is the camera and when I put my hand above it, it will show my hand uh, virtually. Um, it tracks uh, a lot of points, um, tips of my fingers, palm, uh, rotation of the wrist, um, and it'll do for both hands as well. It's pretty nifty, I must say. Uh, for the purpose of this project, I only use one hand. For my synthesizer, I want to control um, all the effects of the left hand and play with my right hand. I would now like to talk about the code that I built for the synthesizer. You are currently seeing Max MSP in presentation mode, and presentation mode is a nice way of visualizing your code. Um, and if I click on patching mode, we'll now see the raw code. 
Down here is a important function, almost the quintessential function for the synthesizer, called leap underscore motion underscore O2. And along with this function came a specific piece of software called reach. And what these two will do is it will help leap motion send the data it reads from hands into Max in order for users to code data utilizing this data from the leap motion controller. And so you see uh, several outlets here at the bottom and each one represents to a different piece of data from the hand. Uh, for example, this one is left hand middle finger Z position. If I go down a bit more, right hand palm X position. And I'll even do more like wrist rotation and stuff like that. Over here I have a LED light um, connected to the left hand presence inlet. And so when the controller or the camera sees my left hand, it'll turn the LED on. And we'll see this function a lot when I go ahead and talk about different effects. Now I'd like to quickly talk about the core of the synthesizer and how it actually makes sound. So in this little sub function here, we have five separate oscillators and what each oscillator will do is create a sinusoidal wave um, dependent on the MIDI value sent to it. And I have five of these in order for the synthesizer to create five notes. So if I only had one of these, I'd only be making one tone at a time. I wouldn't be able to do chords. That is called a monophonic synthesizer, a synthesizer that can only have one voice. But I wanted a polyphonic synthesizer, a synthesizer with many voices. So I just copy and pasted the oscillator five times in order to create a polyphonic synthesizer. And now I want to get into some of the effects I created for the synthesizer. So up here we have a block of code that seemingly doesn't look like it's connected to anything, but I promised you it is connected. It is the low frequency oscillator. And what this will do is when I put my hand over the leap motion controller, it'll read the rotation of my left hand. And based on the rotation of my left hand, it will create a low frequency oscillator and that basically is a sinusoidal wave that um, travels at a very low frequency and sinusoidal waves they go from a value of 1 to negative 1 and so you can use this effect and apply it to something such as volume and you basically take the volume block which in theory um, is playing out of volume, I don't know, 50 decibels. And when you multiply it by a sinusoidal wave, you'll get points in time where you're multiplying it by zero, which in theory cuts off the volume. And so when you combine those two, you'll get this sort of tremolo effect as such. The next effect I want to talk about brings us back to the synthesizer and I want to go into one of these oscillators. And in these oscillators, um, it'll take MIDI data and put it through a sinusoidal wave generator and that's how it creates the tones for the synthesizer. However, I also have it branching off to another effect, um, I call it the harmonic effect. And what it'll do is it'll take this uh, the MIDI value and multiply it by a factor of three, essentially making a harmonic um, of that tone. And based off um, whether I open or close a finger, it will turn off or on this harmonic. So for this oscillator, the thumb controls it. So if I open my thumb, you can see the volume goes up on this harmonic and it'll essentially turn on the harmonic. Which brings me back to um, having five oscillators. I wanted to have five oscillators so that each finger would control a different note. Um, so when I'm playing a five note chord and I slowly turn or I slowly open each finger, it'll create a new harmonic. So
the next effect I'd like to talk about is the low pass filter. And how a low pass filter works is it sets a cutoff frequency and anything below that frequency will pass through but anything above it will get attenuated. And how I have this working in my synthesizer is the synthesizer will read the X position of my left hand and it'll use that to set off the cutoff frequency. And I want to get out of this code block and zoom in on the spectroscope here. Play a note. Oh. And while you can still audibly hear the low pass filter, the spectroscope will help uh, visualize it as well. I have one more effect to talk about and it is the gain control and what this effect does it'll take Y data from my left hand so as it's going up and down and it will subtract concurrent pieces of data and to find the displacement of the left hand between each point and it'll read that displacement and based on whether or not if the hand is moving um, in the Y direction, it'll increase the gain. Now this effect isn't the prettiest effect, however I did want to demonstrate that Max can go beyond and do mathematical interpretations of, these, of this data in order to use data beyond just the position data. So. And that is the synthesizer I built for my capstone project. Now I had to talk about uh, effects and uh, the leap motion controller a lot, so I couldn't really dive into the specifics of Max MSP. But if you're interested, I highly encourage you checking it out. You can do a lot of things creatively with um, sound and music manipulation. But with that, that concludes my presentation on my capstone project for my music technology minor. I'd like to thank Dr. Brian Moore uh, for helping me uh, with this project and I would like to thank all my friends and family that have supported me throughout all of my studies. Thank you.